I was about nine or ten years old in 1964, and my dad's friend took us on a day trip out to Half Moon Bay Drag Strip, and uh, being able to watch cars accelerating from a dead stop through a quarter mile was very fascinating. Just the, the speed, the uh, passion, and the emotion that the audience had watching it, uh, I got caught up in that. I was about 14 years old, I went against my parents' wishes and purchased my first car uh, for about $50. And uh, I started to learn how to work on the various components of the car to get it started and running. It was totally the exposure of the 1960s, which uh, was a just kind of the golden era of cars. My favorite car experience happened to be, uh, the second car I purchased was a 1957 Chevrolet. And uh, basically in modifying the engine for high speed performance. We were very fortunate back then. There were several drag racing tracks in the Bay Area at the time. And so in high school, we were able to uh, drive our car across the San Mateo Hayward Bridge, head down to Fremont, drag race. Uh, they called it a grudge night uh, drag race meet on Friday nights. And it was a great experience for us and hopefully we were able to make the journey back home since drag racing is very aggressive towards uh, damaging engine parts and so forth. Later in life I was able to purchase a 1948 English Ford Anglia which was a gasser. It's a lightweight car and had a high performance uh, Chevy V8 and uh, was able to run in the 9.99 second uh, bracket, which is known as super gas in the NHRA uh, Drag Racing Association. And I was able to uh, competitively run in that bracket and uh, it attained a speed of about 140 miles an hour in the quarter mile. We made our move out of the Bay Area to the Sacramento Valley area. Uh, generally speaking, it's very difficult to work on classic cars or high performance cars out of your residential area. So in looking uh, at where we may land in retirement, we picked the uh, town of Galt out in the rural area. And while our home was being built, we had an additional three car uh, shop uh, built that matched the architecture of the house. And so uh, this became very conducive for me to work on the cars without disturbing our neighbors. We live on two acres and it allows us to uh, work freely on our projects. Uh, there's a community of people here who also have their classic and high performance cars. So in essence, we uh, are able to set up the shop to have a, a lift, an air compressor, uh, the tools, welding equipment, everything necessary to fabricate and restore uh, a car or a, uh, create a hot rod. I found that uh, having uh, enjoyed this particular hobby with a passion, it is, uh, I was very grateful to be part of a time when cars were part of our culture and basically you could identify uh, every single car on the road at the time. Uh, in every production year you could tell a Ford and a Chevy and a Chrysler and so basically that era has kind of slipped past us 
and I do appreciate looking back uh, at the cars of the past that uh, have made a very great hobby for us and uh, it's shared by many, many people and so I hope to continue to do this as long as I'm able to. No, I'm doing, doing like a mini doc. Oh, cool. Mini documentary. Are we going to do a burnout? Uh <laughs>